If we lived in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to worry about spraying our fruits and insects and birds and various other things would just behave themselves. But since we don't, today we're going to talk about some of the personal protective equipment that you should have on hand when you are spraying in your orchard. You're most likely to expose yourself to pesticides in the mixing and loading process. So it's a good idea to use gloves as your first line of protection. These are ordinary work gloves or gardening gloves. These are made out of cloth and also leather gloves are not recommended for spraying pesticides. Over here we have some rubber coated gloves and <clears throat> these gloves are resistant to chemicals. The one thing I don't like about these gloves is that they do have a little bit of cloth around the edge here which can get pesticides on them and they're fairly short. I'd like to have longer gloves. Now you'll notice I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. If you're going to be out spraying pesticides you should wear a long sleeve shirt and the long sleeve shirt should go down over the gloves. Another example of some personal protective equipment would be eye protection. Now if I'm mixing up my pesticides I get a little bit of protection by wearing these sunglasses but there are safety glasses on the market that when I put these safety glasses on they give me a little bit more protection than your average sunglasses because there's a ridge on the top here and also protection on the sides so that I don't get any splashing of any material into my eyes. And I'm also trying to avoid getting dust in my eyes because in the case of the cap tan that we talked about earlier, it's an eye irritant and can cause some temporary eye damage. So you want to protect your eyes, especially when you're mixing this material. Another example of eye protection would be these goggles here. Now a lot of commercial growers will use a full face mask or even a helmet but it's not really necessary for a home gardener or home orchard simply because you're not using materials that are that toxic. But to protect your eyes, you can use these goggles. They just slip over your eyes. Make sure you have a good fit. And you can adjust the straps based on your needs. And it creates a really nice seal and protects your eyes from dust and liquids. Now on a very hot, humid day, and if you start sweating, they will fog up. So it makes it a little difficult to see in these sometimes. You can uh, buy materials that scuba divers use, uh, a material that you squirt in, it's like eye drops, and you wipe it on the inside of the um, goggles, and it will help to keep them from fogging up. If you want more complete protection, especially if you're spraying a lot of trees in your backyard, you may even want to get a complete suit. Now, this happens to be a uh, rubberized material. It's like a raincoat. Timex are really and, good uh, suit too. This covers long sleeves, pants to go with it, and even a little hood that you can put on to protect your head. This will minimize your exposure to any drifting materials. But one of the ways that you can avoid being exposed to materials that might drift is to try to spray really early in the morning or late in the evening when there's less of a chance of having small breezes move up and move the spray around and get yourself wet. The last piece of personal protective equipment that we're going to talk about today is the respirator. And it fits over your face like this. And this is for your head. And then there are a couple of straps here on the bottom that you adjust around the back of your neck. These are the filters. And these filters are removable. And you should change these filters at least once a year. Now you can extend the life of the filters by storing your respirator inside of a plastic bag or the original container. It keeps dust off the filter. Another thing that you want to be sure of is that you have a good seal when you put this on. It should breathe very easily. If you notice the breathing is getting more difficult, that means the filters are getting clogged and you need to replace them. And try to buy your respirators at a local source because they're more likely to carry them, uh, the replacement filters, and you don't have to order them through the mail. Another thing that you want to check to make sure that your respirator is working properly, there are these little rubber seals on the inside. This is what they look like. They go right in here in the corner. And you want to be sure those are in place. If they're not, then your respirator is not going to work properly. And a lot of times you can buy those also at the same location where you buy the respirator. 
Now, I'm going to put all this stuff on for you right quick so you can see what I would look like with all my personal protection equipment on at the same time. I'm going to do it very quickly because it's not much fun to have on in a hot, humid day here in Michigan. Okay, now I put on the, the suit so you can see something else. If you look down at my boots, you'll notice something. On one side, the pant leg is on the outside. On the other side, the pant leg is in. This is the proper way to wear your pants because is, if any liquid gets on these pants, it'll roll down and off the boot. On this side, if it's tucked into your boot, it'll roll down and into your boot, thus exposing you to pesticides. So your boot pant legs should be out as well as when you're putting on gloves, it should come down, your collar should, or your uh, sleeve should come down over the gloves. Now I'm going to put on all these goodies and most backyard people or orchardists would not use this much personal protection equipment, but I have over 100 fruit trees and I want to minimize my exposure. I'll put all these goodies on for you. And I'm going to do this quickly because I'm baking. Actually, I shouldn't put the gloves on yet. Respirator. Ta-da! I'm ready to spray. I'm ready to go now. Look out, bud. I'm going to take you out. and stuff for go all over your face. All right, let's try it again. The first thing we're, we're going to get off of it. 